What's up guys and welcome to the channel. We've got a lot to talk about today, so let's get started. I didn't know it was gonna be raining, so I just kinda of left both cars out overnight, which is actually a first. Both cars to be left out uncovered. That brings me to a point that I've been wanting to cover. I've covered it before, but I think we need to go over it again because there's some things that I have noticed through the years, some little tips and tricks with these cars to tell if your door is aligned properly or not. Now we're gonna go out into the rain, so you're probably gonna get a little bit of splatter on the screen, but that's okay. We'll go out here, let's look at the car, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. If you look very closely at the gap right here, you can tell that there's more of a gap right here than there is here. A lot of times the molding has just kind of fallen down a little bit and you can push it back up. But in most cases, what this tells you is that the door is actually not aligned properly. And what I mean by that is down here at the striker. So like I've told you guys before, these strikers are fully adjustable. They go up and down and in and out. When you see a problem like that, the best thing to do is go ahead and adjust the striker, you know, down obviously in this situation so that the door lines up better. I've been noticing this a lot on cars lately. Now that I'm aware of it, it's an issue, you know, uh, can actually cause things to leak because the door's not sitting correctly. It's kind of twisted and it's either sitting up too high or too low. So what we're going to do right now is just go in real quick, like adjust this so I can show you that it does move up and down as you adjust it. That is a T50. I'm gonna make some drastic changes real quick like and try to show you guys what it is that I'm talking about. Whenever you're doing this, do not loosen these things completely up and don't take everything, don't take the bolt all the way out. But as you can see, this thing kind of moves up and down. So what we're gonna do is just move it all the way down. The door should still shut. Okay, so I don't know if you guys can see a difference, but now you're usually you're gonna have a bigger gap right here. Uh, most all of them are about the same way, but now this gap has closed a little bit better. And I'll show you guys an extreme example of what it is that I'm talking about. Now on this, let's step back right here. On this window, you can really see a difference in it. Um, that side is jacked way up. It was worse than that, but I've adjusted it some. And the problem is, is worn out door pins now as I shut this door you can see that the door moves up in order I'll try to slow that down for you guys but the door has to move up because the, the hinge pins are worn out over here and we did not replace these so what has to happen is it has to catch that latch and then pull itself up so you can see that this is a big difference. Now, it's not necessarily a big deal or a game changer, but what I have noticed is it tries to kick out the outside of the door here, the window. Now there are ways to adjust this also. So I think I'll go ahead and cover that real quick with you guys, just as a reminder of how to adjust your windows if you're getting leaking. So first off, you need to make sure that your striker is adjusted properly. Once you do that, then check and make sure if your door seals up. If your door does not seal up, one of the things you can do is come on the outside and push and see how much flex you have. You can also put a flashlight in under here and you can look to see if there's any light coming through this seal right here. But a lot of times, these doors have to be manually adjusted. So like I said, we've covered this before, but we're gonna go ahead and cover it again since it's raining, this is a perfect time. We interrupt our program to bring you this important message. A lot of times what you have to do, and the best thing to do is like grab like a two by four and stretch across your door, but you don't have to do that. The best thing to do is just come in and pull on these doors, pull on the tops of your window. Actually pull it in, they will bend. So that actually just moved a lot. That looks a lot more straight than it did before. Now, now look, hardly any flex at all. Now, I do wanna go ahead and tell you guys, please be careful when you do that. Don't pull too hard. 
you could break the glass, you could bend everything completely out of sorts, but that is how you adjust your windows if you're having leaking issues. Let's say you put in some new weather stripping and it's still leaking, go to this, try it. Pull on one side of it, you'll feel it bend a little bit, and then there you go. Now, you will have no issues with that window sealing up. So, from my understanding, that's the way that Ford would address that issue when these cars would come in when they were fairly new, still on the car lots, they would bring them in and they would adjust on them like that. They would put a board across them. I forgot who told me that. I think it was uh, Tim, actually. That's what I do, and it works great. So those are all the ways you pretty much can adjust your doors. Like I said, I've covered it before, but I think it's worth mentioning going back over again since it's raining. So that was short and sweet. Now let's move on to the next topic, which is we obviously have a new logo for the channel. So what do you guys think about it? Uh, I'm no graphics artist or anything like that. You know, I'm no expert. I've been working in Photoshop for years, but that doesn't mean that I'm that good at it. So I've come up with a very simple logo uh, that we can put on a shirt at some point, we're not doing that right now, that defines our channel. That's who we are, right? And to be honest with you, that's a really hard thing to do these days, to, to stand out and to have something that is unique, that signifies you and your channel and what it is that you stand for. So we designed this new logo, uh, like I said, just for recognition. I want to eventually do some shirts now my wife does shirts. Um, she actually does a bunch of crafts and stuff. So, so we can do like heat press vinyl shirts and stuff like that. But I really don't want to sell those. I don't want to put those out to everybody. I did that in my PFO Mustangs club, sold some of the shirts and they just really kind of uh, didn't work out very good. They didn't last very long and we don't want that. So more than likely I will outsource the uh, shirts whenever we get to that point and uh, we'll have it to where you guys can just click it and hopefully they'll just be drop shipped to you. But that's, that's coming in a, at a later date, not right this second. If any of you guys don't know, this will be the first time I've ever addressed this in my video. Brew2L stands for brutal. And that's the tag that's on the Cobra. That was also the tag that was on my 03 Anniversary Edition Cobra back in like 08 or so. So I wanted to put brutal on the tag. I couldn't get that obviously, so I had to spell it a different way. So that's how I come up with Brew2L stands for brutal. But what does brutal explain to you? What is, what is brutal when you come across my channel? So let's say you see some Mustang content, you click on it, you look at it, and then you look down at my name and it's like just brutal. You're like, I don't, I don't know what this guy does. I mean, what is he into? So I'm kind of tempted to include either the Mustang or Fox body. More than likely, I, it would be just Fox body content for the most part. I'm really tempted to include something like that into the name, but I cannot seem to make anything work or anything flow. Anyway, I'm not gonna, we're not gonna harp on this. It was just something that I'm thinking about. I don't know that I'm gonna do it. I will say though, if we are gonna do it, I need to do it pretty quick because we don't wanna get any bigger and then have to deal with the ripple effect of changing the name and stuff like that. I would like to keep Brutal in the name and just add to it or something like that. If you guys have any suggestions down below, please let me know. Also, if you don't think we should touch the name, that's fine too because I kinda somewhat agree. I'm torn on it to be completely honest with you. Honestly guys, we have been pretty much nonstop Fox Body content. I still own a Cobra, as you guys know. There's a good chance this car may find a new home. I'm not sure yet. Um, and yes, I do read the comments. I know a lot of people are saying, just fix the car, fix the car. Well, the car is not really broken. The car needs a new tune for me to be happy with it. And the transmission is making a whining noise, which I'm almost 100% sure it is a throwout bearing. So I don't really drive the car, so that's not an issue. Once we start working on the car, doing the tune and all that, I will go in and put a new throwout bearing in the car. All right, guys, I'm gonna put up a little bit of information. I have one of my subscribers that's wanting to sell a car. So what I'm gonna do is put up a few pictures and I'm going to put his Instagram up. I don't know the price on the car, he did not tell me, but if any of you guys are interested in the car, look him up on Instagram, get up with him, and maybe you guys can work a deal out. Also guys, I will be, uh, as far as I know, I will be at Foxtoberfest coming up in 2019. So I hope to see you guys there. We'll start like a countdown to Foxtoberfest coming up here pretty soon. We have to get my car ready. There's still a lot of issues that need to be addressed before that car is roadworthy to go to North Carolina. We are down in South Alabama, so we gotta get this thing ready. So we'll start that countdown here pretty soon. We also have the blue car that is a possible project. And also one of my subscribers has stepped up. We've been in communication. There's a good chance that I'm gonna get a few parts from him also that'll really help this build out. Just so you guys know though, this build will be stretched out probably over the entire year. We'll just touch on it here and there as we get time, as we get money, and it's gonna be a super budget build. That doesn't mean it can't look good, but it's gonna be a super budget build. Anyway, guys, I've rambled long enough. As always, thanks for watching.